What's up everyone, this is your boy here, the Yankee Mad Dog Messiah here with you with your second video of the day. Of course, um, if you did watch the first video, I appreciate it. Uh, second video here, uh, we're going to switch things up from wrestling uh, to some soccer. Yeah, um, it's been a while since I've talked about some soccer here in U.S. men's soccer. So, do me a favor, please. Smash that bell, turn on all notifications when I do come out with a video, and, um, so last night, um, while we had that big Monday night football game last night between the, um, Eagles and the Chiefs, we had a CONACAF Nations League game, and this one was a big one too, people, uh, for obvious reasons, uh, the United States going into this game, you know, they're three, Mill up on Trinidad and Tobago. So, if they can keep their 3 nothing lead uh, going into that second leg, they're going to qualify for the Copa America. And that's what Team USA did last night. They did qualify for the Copa America. Um, and for people that don't watch soccer, um, qualification for... This, um, for any type of soccer, whether it's the Champions League or the World Cup or the Euros, um, which are already wrapped up, um, today. Now we go into Phase 2 with the playoffs. It could get confusing at times. So, as I mentioned, you know, the United States won their first game at home 3 nothing. And what happens last night? Yes, we lose to Trinidad and Tobago 2-1. to one. So, at the end with all of those games, United States still advances to the, um, the semifinals of the CONCACAF Nations League and they go into the Copa America because of the act, um... the way that the, the uh, goal, uh, is. The away goal. And... When you lose to Trinidad and Tobago and almost collapse the opportunity to go to the uh, Copa America, it's fucking embarrassing. Um, if you all remember, uh, Trinidad and Tobago, that is a place that is cursed in American soccer history. Remember the last time we played at Trinidad and Tobago? You want to know what happened? That's right. One of the biggest choke jobs in the history of the U.S. men's national team. When you miss the 2018 FIFA World Cup. And everybody remembers the rant that I went on that night. Um, that was on my old channel. I wish I had that. So, why am I bringing um, the 2018 FIFA World Cup qualification all over here because it's fucking embarrassing. So I come on here at times talk about the U.S. men national team and I talk about the fact that Greg Bohalter needs to be fired. How Greg Bohalter should have never came back to Team USA. Why? Because the U.S. men's national team is my second favorite team to watch outside of Portugal. Who, by the way, Portugal, mind you, um, qualified for the uh, Euros, went undefeated in qualification. And I know, talking about men's soccer here, um, it's pointless. It, it, it's not like... The United States Soccer Federation watches my videos and say, oh, yeah, he's just another fucking reject, another fucking ham and that probably lives in his mother's basement. But here's the thing. Ever since, and I want to give you this tidbit here. Ever since Greg Ballhalter became the manager of this team, you know that we have not won 
an away game? I mean, sure. I I'll tell you this right now. We've lost to Canada 2 nothing on the road. We have drawed, um, I think it was with Nicaragua. That's right. If you look at his record, and we're going to calculate all of this. That was in 2021. 2021, we beat Honduras. I believe it's Honduras. Then on October 10th, 2021, we lose to Costa Rica. Then November 16th, 2021, we draw with Jamaica. January 30th, 2022, we lose to Canada. March 24, 2022, we drew with Mexico. Okay, hold on. Um, yeah, I got. I. I. Yeah, I made an error here because I know we did lose to Costa Rica in one of those games, and then we lose to Trinidad and Tobago recently. In ten games on the road with Greg Ballhalter, you know this guy's only won one game. I. I mean, it's pathetic, man. I mean. I get the fact that losing against Mexico on the road or Canada because Canada is actually getting better in CONACAF, but and also the fact that you have um, a couple of ties here because of the World Cup qualifying and how they set that up. But to have one win in CONACAF road games... That's not even close to respectable. And that's another reason why you got to fire this guy, Greg Bohalter. And, and that's really the best guy that's for your job? This fucking asshole um, who has a reputation of fucking... Um, Giving players a bad name. You know, we're the United States of America. We're the U.S. men's national team. We should be able to go out and get a decent coach. Someone who doesn't have a family member in the United States Soccer Federation. And someone who can win. Now, that's my rant right there. That's part one. Let me get to part two of my rant. So, last night, during that loss, the big story was Sajino Des being a freaking douchebag. And he does make history. He's the first United States men national team player with an assist and a red card in the same game since what he did this year against Mexico in the Nations League semifinals. Tim Ream and Matt Turnerman, they had every right to punch him in the face. Listen. You know, I can go on here and defend Des here. Um, here's what I think of him. He's a unique player. Um, he provides something coming up the ring. Like I mentioned, he had the assist. That gave the United States a one nothing lead. But he just does stupid things. And the last thing that you can do is... Cost your team a legit player and do this kind of a stunt. Like, fuck! Even Tim Ream blasted him in the postgame last night. 
I wish I had that clip so y'all can hear it. But the fact of the matter is, I, I don't want to hear the excuses. Oh, yeah, Christian Pulisic, uh, he didn't play. I understand he got injured. I understand uh, Timothy Rayo did not play. I believe he was injured too. Weston McKenney actually got injured during training prepping for this game. <clears throat> you look at this team right here. This team is deep. This team has talent. But it's being washed away by Greg Ballhalter. I'm sick and fucking tired of having to come on this platform and rant about this guy. And I'm going to still keep talking shit about this guy until the day this guy actually gets fired. <clears throat> you lose to Trinidad and fucking Tobago with a real roster of guys. Not fucking some USL fucking roster that fucking... That's how Trinidad and Tobago won. Some of their players do play in the USL. But we're not putting MLS group players on this team. And we certainly are not putting some freaking C team out there. Even uh, Andreas Keta, one of the most respected freaking soccer guys out there. One of my favorite soccer commentators. This is what he said on freaking Twitter last night. You are up 4 nothing in the series. Yes. You lose your right fullback to a red card and you leave your double nine on the game to take out your best ball handler. In what textbook is that tactic that Bull Halter used today? That allowed a semi-pro team like TNT, mind you, ranked number 99th in the world. Yes, 99th in the world. To outplay the U.S. the entire second half. Luckily, they ran out of gas around the 30th mark and could not get the two goals they needed. So, Ballhalter said that his plan was going to take uh, Gio Reyna off at halftime. All right, that's cool. I get that. But you left two guys in Ricardo Pepe and Floro up top, and you did not even have a right back? This motherfucker, man. He can't see what's going on in a match. And, I mean, come on. I play top 11 soccer. For crying out loud. If I lose a right back. Right? Or a left back. To a red card. I'm going to have to freaking sub one of my players. <coughs> to try to freaking get some defensive stability. It's pathetic, man. This guy is a failure. So, yeah. Let me just say this in conclusion. Greg Bullhalter, fire this motherfucker. I swear to fucking God, man. If they fail in the Copa America, which I know they will because you look at Copa America right now. You got freaking Argentina, the best team in the world. Brazil. Those two teams are playing tonight. And they're going to be playing during um, my Yankee offseason podcast. I'm going to have my iPad right here and watch that game. And then you got Mexico playing Honduras tonight. <clears throat> Just think about it for a moment. Mexico loses this game tonight. 
the Mexican soccer fans are going to be freaking up in arms with that national team. Like, how in the hell do you lose 2-0 on the road to Honduras? Oh, man. Oh, man. Tuesday night soccer, man, is gotten very interesting tonight. Very interesting. And yeah, to Sergino Des, stop being a fucking douchebag. Play the game right. Don't let your emo don't let your emotions get the hand of you. Don't be a fucking um <clears throat> what do we say in hockey? A goon, so to say. An enforcer. Mind you. Play the game the right way. That's all I got to say on that. So, um, if you guys have been watching for 16 minutes, man, oh boy, I appreciate you guys fucking hanging in there with me, guys. So, until then, it's your Yankee Mad Dog Messiah. I'm out. Peace, and I'll see you guys later tonight for the Yankee Offseason Podcast.